even if I were born into poverty, once I accept Jesus, he wants to bring me into prosperity. And understand prosperity is more than money because you can have all the money in the world, but if you ain't in your right mind, if you don't have your health, you still a jacked up individual. And so when you talk about prosperity, prosperity affects every aspect of your life. Oh, that's the vision of this church is that we be productive in every aspect of our lives. Am I right about it? And so again, when I look at John 10 and 10, it says to me clearly that I'm not to live a life of poverty. I'm not to get satisfied not having nothing. I am not supposed to get stuck always begging and borrowing from people. I love it the way David said it. David said I once was, was young, but now I'm old, but I never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Oh, that tells me that God wants me to prosper. And if my children are lined up, he'll prosper them just because they my seed. Oh, good God Almighty that I may have experienced a generational curse, but because I chose to do right by God, I'm now releasing a generational blessing over my family. And everybody that will line up and follow me going to get blessed because the head is blessed. And when the head is blessed, it can't help but to float. You better slap somebody with a high five and tell me it's flowing down. But if you, Start living by common sense. Start living by what your grandmama told you even though she didn't give you Bible. She didn't give you scripture. Then you can actually end up in a place God never ordained you to be. And you can fall in love with something that you need to divorce. Uh, can I preach it right? I'm going to prosper no matter how y'all look at me. I'm going to prosper because I know it's the will of God. Roll your eyes, but I'm going to keep prospering. Talk about me, but I'm going to keep prospering. Why? I know it's the will of God. But see, a, poverty, a, a person that has a poverty mentality, you can introduce them to battle, but they won't let their mind go into it. You can tell them God want them on the vacation, but they can't see themselves on the vacation. You can tell them that God want them to start the business, but they can't see themselves owning anything. You can tell them God will bring them out of the apartment and put them in a the house, but they can't see themselves owning anything. You can show them scripture, but they'd rather be broke and poor. As if you're more anointed when you ain't got nothing. The devil is a lie. Poverty is an enemy. But you know what else Jesus said in John 10 and 10? He said, I've come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Why did he say abundant life? Because he didn't want them boys to mess around and think he was talking about existing only. He already knew they were existing. He came and told them, if y'all ever get to the point to where you're just existing and you're not living, existing is an enemy. God did not save you for you to take up space. God did not save you for you to copycat somebody else. God does not have clones. God has originals so anytime folk try to make me just exist I gotta fight you on that when you tell me I can only have one house I gotta fight you on that because the scripture said he'll give me houses Watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it that I didn't even build he'll give me well that I didn't Tell somebody there are certain blessings God don't want you to work hard for. He just want to give it to you. So I have to resist the temptation just to exist. Just to get up without purpose. No, every day God allow me to see is the day I should walk in purpose. But then I look at James 1 and 2. James said, my brothering, count it all joy when you fall 
into various trials and tribulations and trouble and hardship and mishap and misery and complication when you're going through pain when you're going through suffering don't you get depressed depression is an enemy you got to have joy in the hottest of the hottest trials God who am I preaching to depression is an enemy you can lose your job, but it, ain't, it shouldn't depress you. Because when one door closes, another door opens. And you got to know when to go through the next door. Tell your neighbor, don't get trapped on the wrong side. That's what depression does. It locks you in to your past. And depression tells you stuff like you will never be anything. Depression is an enemy. It might try to show up, but I'm going to fight it. <laughs> Woo! And then when I look at 3 John 2, where he said, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul does prosper. That tell me right there, sickness is an enemy. It may attack my body, but I'm not falling in love with arthritis. I'm not falling in love with diabetes. I'm not falling in love with cancer. I'm not falling in love with anxiety. I am Woo, can I take this thing other? I don't care how many of your relatives died with what you battling with. You are not to succumb to it. You are not to fall in love with it. And I'm not, it's not going to take me out just because it took somebody else out. I am to fight sickness. And to look at it as an enemy. The pain is real. But I refuse to allow the pain to stop me from doing what he told me to do. You got to learn to do what God told you to do when you're in pain. Hurting, but I'm still going to do it. Mm, Balling in my body, but Lord, I'm going to do what you told me to do. Even if I'm the last one to get in the church, I'm going to leave the house early. Because I know it takes me a few minutes to get in there. But I might just be on barely on one leg. But when I get up in the house, I'm still going to leap for joy. Even if I got to get... Folk laughing, but I ain't giving in to it. Oh, they think it's funny, but I'm not giving in to what I'm going. The Bible says in Hebrews 11 that they subdue kingdoms through their faith. I've got to break that this year. So what? If the supervisor don't like me, I'm going to get the promotion anyhow. So what if the teacher don't like me? I'm going to pass the class with an A anyhow. So what if the coach don't like me? I'm going to get the starting position anyhow. It's so what if the bank president don't like me? I'm going to get the house anyhow. See, you got to learn not to allow folk to control you. And, and before you worry about what everybody else is going to do, the main thing that you have to subdue is your flesh. Because if you are not careful, you're going to mess up yourself again. Did you hear what I said? If you are not careful, and if you don't bring your flesh up under subjection, it ain't going to be the devil. It ain't going to be the enemy. It won't be your hater. It's you messing up yourself again. And I don't care how saved you are. We all battle with this flesh. Battle from time to time. Wanting to touch something. That God say don't touch it. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. But the thing he tells me not to touch is the very thing I dream about. It is the very thing that when I dream, I wake up smiling before I ever repent. Oh, I'm coming up in your house. Yeah, 
I'm talking about what you see sometimes. Attracted to things, drawn to things that I know this will hurt me. But I want it anyhow. And that is the reason most folk can't control the flesh. Is why even in the church you have so much slipping and, and tipping and dipping going on. Because people are not putting their flesh up under subjection. Sister, you got to be able to know he look good, but I can't touch it. Brother, you got to know she fine, but it ain't mine and I can't touch it. Gotta be able to compliment somebody and keep it moving. Ah, yeah, I did that looks good on you, but I got to keep it moving. <laughs> Woo! See, when church folk, when you preach on the flesh, it get quiet. Because your neighbor wants you to think they're more than what they are. They want you to think they had. Uh, I'll tell your neighbor you ain't gonna fool me this morning tell them you ain't Holy Ghost headquarters tell them you battle with your flesh sometime too yeah you ain't always speaking in tongues every dream ain't about heaven come on somebody <laughs> 